Professor Dr. Butner, we've listened to a really fascinating presentation today about what you've achieved here at uh, Electronic Werk uh, Hamburg with the digital factory uh, and with the development and culture behind that. Tell me a bit about how the ethos has worked and, and how the program came about. Yeah, first of all, it's about the customers. So we, we have to organize our business in a way that we satisfy the customers and that means uh, the first priority for us is the highest quality that we can achieve for the customers and second topic uh, logistics we mm -hmm. we have to deliver in the best performance that we can apply for that so in this way we thought about the the real strategy what we have to apply to make this happen and and this means uh, we need we need many tools to support the highest quality approach and we need the best culture to support this from a human being side. Mm. So, and this was uh, the idea that uh, even the first plant manager here thought in this way and implemented this in the right way from mm. the beginning. And we just developed it further on over the 25 years now to a almost perfect organism. Yeah, I was, I was fascinated by one of the statistics you mentioned for those 25 years. Approximately the same number of people yeah. pretty close to the same footprint and eight times the output yeah. that's phenomenal that's down to automation down to changes in process it's more than this it, it comes to the products in the first place so products getting smaller and on the other hand it's the process mm. so we, we optimize like hell so you know we we integrate all employees in our optimization process and uh, this is organized by us so we we ask our people to work with us to think about further improvements. And this goes every quarter in a year through the factory mm -hmm. with different uh, uh, tasks, with different ideas. Uh, these organized by us and, and thought through us so that uh, we um, initiate th the thinking process for all employees mm -hmm. uh, for, for ideas what can be done better mm. to improve and stabilize yeah. further the business. Yeah, and you talked a little bit about actually giving them tools that makes them more comfortable doing their job, where they can see where they're successful, where they have an open mm -hmm. culture of communication. It must be really important to have all of those 1,000 people on board with that idea for it yeah. to work. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, if, if employees make a mistakes, they, they're trying to hide probably mm. because it's not comfortable yeah. to show that you did a mistake. And this was uh, the very first idea that we have to avoid this mm. behavior. So that's why we implemented an open culture uh, where we don't blame the guilty that made mm. a mistake, but we, we told everybody we have to look for the root mm. cause and uh, we have to solve the root cause. Understood that not everybody can do always mm. mistakes. So yeah. sure, this yeah. is understood by everybody here. and and. This is now the way how we do it. And the difficult thing in this strategy was to really make people believe mm. that, that we leave, that, that we do it this mm. way, that we live in this culture. Yeah. So and, and we, we do everything to support this culture for yeah. the future. Yeah, and they have to feel safe in that culture, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So if I look at that culture and, and what you've done here, you've achieved a great deal and it makes sense. But you have control over what's within these four walls, and you live in a in a supply chain that's broader than that. Is there is there a desire to drive that digital factory outside of these walls and actually have a digital supply chain? Uh, there is not a desire, but I think a must, a okay. necessity, because uh, uh, what we have experienced, if you look into the factory in our factory, uh, normally we 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 don't do so many mistakes by ourselves. Most mistakes that, that we find are done by supplier, external, external supplier. And that's why uh, uh, what, what I believe, we will do business in the future only with companies that have a similar approach, mm. that are digital, that know exactly what they did, how they have produced the products, which temperature, mm. which parts and so on and so on and this is what we started right now we had a huge problem with with one supplier and and uh, he he wrote manually 
the process data on his mm -hmm. journal. And, and what I mentioned in my presentation, a, a good human being has a failure rate of about 500 dpm. We have Six Sigma level and better. Mm -hmm. And in this way, if you record manually, you still record 500 dpm failure. Mm. Yeah. And then you record failure. So you have an unbelievable failure rate in the record. Mm. And that's why we, we push now major supplier to support us in, in implementing the digital approach. Yeah. And we started already with supplier that they have to deliver their manufacturing data with the parts mm. to us. Okay. So that we at any time can look into the data to see whether the, the, the processes on customer side, uh, on supplier side, were correct. Yeah, and you, I, I completely understand. You have to have that fanatical traceability, that absolute data, because as you said, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. Talking about suppliers, we're here today with uh, the news that two of your suppliers are integrating, becoming part of one team, Deck and yeah. Place. You've worked with both of those companies almost from the start of this yeah, factory. Yeah. Do they fit that culture? Do they, do they believe what you believe in that traceability and that fanatical desire to improve? I mean, uh, first of all, a statement to the merge of the two companies. So both are specialists in their former mm. business. The good news for me is that we integrate now the two business into one company and this helps me to really focus on on solutions for standard data, standard interfaces, mm. web services, whatever we need and so on for almost a complete uh, process in my factory. And mm -hmm. this is the the best what we can do and the most necessary step that we need in our factories. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is more or less a lack right now in the world. We don't have these standards in industries. No industries has no. These, standar these standards. And, and this is going to be, to me, at least the first step in the right direction. Yeah. And we work, as you said, already more than 20 years together with both parties. So we know each other very well. Mm. and we will support this process very well so that we get the solution that yeah. we need for our yeah. business. And you mentioned that um, that standardization and that connectivity. And in, in, in thinking about what you talk about with the digital factory, and we've almost avoided the term industry 4.0 today, but with that kind of concept, are perhaps the two givens for a piece of capital equipment in that facility that it has to know what's coming into it, it has to be able to read and understand what's coming into it, and it has to be able to then communicate its data externally in a way that other equipment can understand and your systems can yeah, understand. Yeah, are those the two key factors? These are the two key factors, and if you look what we do over the fiscal years, we replace about 20% of our equipment every year. Mm -hmm. So we need a very simple way to integrate new machines into our network. Yeah. And that's why this is basic for us. Uh, that's why we have developed an, an own data service. Mm -hmm. We call it web service, Comesco, to make sure that uh, we have a very simple interface between the machines and, and our network. And, and this is what our supplier have to do. Yeah. They have to integrate our web service in their yeah. software, machine software, to make sure that with the plug and work, yeah. Yeah. We have an easy connection to our network. Yeah, and yeah. so you can install, update, you don't have downtime, yeah. it works correct, really correct. fast. Yeah. Yeah. Professor Dr. Bergmer, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your hospitality. It's been fascinating looking around here. I was lucky enough to visit your factory in uh, Chengdu two weeks ago, oh, okay. and an absolute fascinating example of, of how making something work allows you to replicate it elsewhere. So congratulations on thank that as well. Much. Thank you for your time. You're welcome.